Alright, welcome back to uh, part 3 on the 2005 Yamaha YFC 450. I picked this thing up a couple mm, couple days ago for, what was it, $1,100. So crazy good deal for this thing. It's got tons of aftermarket parts on it, newer plastics. Thing is really, really nice for $1,100. I bought the quad knowing it did not shift and it did not run when I bought it. We hooked up the jumper cables to the battery and it fired right up but uh, we had to completely disassemble the engine to get the shifting problem fixed. And we did that last video. We got the whole engine split and then we got it put back together. It ended up being the shifting drum star was out of alignment. So there's a little pin that holds it in place. That pin was pushed in. So the person that assembled this engine before me accidentally put it in wrong and uh, that was the problem. So now it shifts perfectly and we're ready to get this engine back together. We got a couple new parts for it. We got a timing chain guide. We got a new timing chain. The old chain, you can see, was super, super, like, stretched pretty badly. And it's really, really stiff. So, typically that means it's stretched pretty bad. We'll measure the two and compare them, but uh, I'm guessing that was stretched. Then we got a Top end gasket kit specifically for a 98 millimeter big bore. Um, this thing is big bored to 98 millimeters. Standard bore is 95, so it's three millimeters over bore. So we got that gasket kit, and then we got new valve seals and everything like that. And then we got a gasket for the stator side, and then a gasket for the clutch side. When I tore this thing apart, it originally had silicone around here and not a gasket, so I figured let's get a gasket and do it the correct way. So we should have everything we need to uh, rebuild this thing. So let's get going and hopefully we can do the first start and ride today. So stay tuned. We're going to try to get the engine back in here and uh, get this thing running again. Alright, first thing I want to do is get the lock washer that goes in the clutch on. That was missing. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, typically, these washers, you just bend the tabs over the, uh, the nut here, and that was completely missing. So this nut could have came off, and the clutch could have came off, and everything would have been wrecked. So um, let's get that on there. This thing cost me nine bucks just for a washer. Hopefully it's the correct one. You can see that goes right there like that. It looks like it's going to be the right one, hopefully. Yep, the two tabs go in there and then you bend these over the nut. Just like that. And we'll torque this guy down. Good to go. Let's get the rest of the clutch on here. That goes in there. Alright, so this is a Hinson clutch cover. Right in here like this. Clutch is all on, looking good. All right, here's the old timing chain that we're uh, replacing with a OEM Yamaha one. So you can see the part number 94591-5. Uh, 
57118. So try to go with the standard OEM if you can. Let's see. Doesn't look super stretched. Maybe a little bit. Oh, it's a little it's a little bit stretched. I mean, not a ton. You can see the old chain. It gets kinked up really easily. This one just flows really nicely. See, this one doesn't flow. <laughs> it's just kinked. Look at kink, kink, kink. This one doesn't do that, so. That's the better option there. Go like this, and put it up through there. Get shoved up in there. Bolts out. This isn't a moving part, so it doesn't need a lot. Better safe than sorry here. Uh oh, am I out? Over this, like that. Can go in right there. If I can get it in there. Like that. Starter gear. So this gear right here had like a little lip on the other side. So make sure the little lip goes on that side. Otherwise this thing won't spin. So it can really only go in one way. Time for the flywheel. Line up the groove with the woodruff key. Make sure it doesn't come off. All right, then the washer goes on. Not. All right, we've got the new gasket for the stator side. You use a little Permatex gasket maker just to hold it on. So I'm just like that. Alright, so this one is pretty tricky to get in. But we'll try her.
Alright, that seems good. Alright, clutch gasket going on. Put a little bit of the uh, Permatex gasket maker on it just to hold it in place. Right, we've got the clutch cover on. Just gonna go around and tighten up these bolts here. Make sure everything's tight before we install this back into the frame. Alright, everything's tight. This thing is ready to go back into the quad. Sucker's heavy. All right, time to get the piston on. Ports pointing towards the intake. So three spots for the valves going towards the intake. All right, piston is on. We're gonna use some Permatex this stuff to go around the base gasket. You don't need a lot of this though. Then we're going to oil up the piston and the cylinder before we get the cylinder on. All right, brand new um, timing chain guide here. Get 
that open. All right, brand new, the other one. This thing was cut off of it, right here. So, got a new one, hopefully that works. You push down in here and you make sure it doesn't come back up like that. All right, that's perfect. All right, torque specs for the four bolt, one, two, three, and four right here. We're going to first tighten them to 22 foot-pounds and then back them out to 14 foot-pounds. And then after the 14 foot-pounds, you're going to tighten them another 180 degrees. So I already tightened them to 22 foot-pounds and backed them out. So we're gonna be tightening them to 14 and then another 180. So let's do that next. Let's tighten them to 14 foot-pounds right now. That one's there already. That one's there. That one's there. Then we're gonna go another 180, so. All right, the thing's torqued down properly. We have the piston to top dead center. To find top dead center, you're going to go to the flywheel down here, and you're gonna twist it counterclockwise until you see a notch. You're gonna see an H symbol, and then a notch right after the H. It's the furthest to the right mark. And you'll be able to tell because you can put a screwdriver down here, and it will be the furthest point the piston is up in the cylinder. So once you find top dead center, we're gonna take the exhaust cam and get that going in there. The exhaust cam is the one with the decompression lever or mechanism right here. And there's two little dots on this thing, one right there and one right there. So it's going to sit like this in the cylinder. The lobes are gonna be pointing out. And this mark will be parallel with the surface of the head. And I'll show you guys after. It doesn't really make much sense right now, but. All right, this is what it should look like from the top of the cams. You can see the lobes are pointing away from each other. So these three lobes are pointing that way. These two lobes are pointing this way, you can see. And then we can see the timing marks like I showed you guys before. So if we look at this one, there's a timing mark right there, parallel to the cylinder, and a timing mark right there. And on this one, you can see, if it will focus, timing mark right there, parallel to the surface of the head, and then there's one right there. So that's straight up and down. So that's what that looks like. And then down here, 
you can kind of see in here. Maybe not. You can kind of see the line right there. Kind of. Hard to see. It's kind of far up there. But you can kind of see the line. It's just a single line, kind of like an eye. So everything is set to go. We're going to get everything else put back on. Then we're going to um, measure the valves. All right, valve specs for these. Um, intake are 0.004 to 0 0.006. These two I measured to be 0 0.005. This one was 0 0.004. Um, exhaust is 0 0.008 to 0 0.01. Um, and they were all 0 0.008. So they're on the tight side, but all were fine. So we're gonna run it just like this. All right, we got the whole engine put back together. All the coolant lines are hooked up. Oil lines are hooked up. Everything is ready to go. We got the carburetor on there. So what we're gonna do next is get the pipe on. Um, the pipe is sitting right there. And then we'll get the gas tank on. Oil in it, coolant in it, and then do the first start. Hopefully this thing starts up. <laughs> that would really, really suck if it didn't. All right, we got the battery charger on here. Let's see what happens when we hit the start button. Turns over. That's good. All right, we'll continue the process now. We'll get the pipe on next. All right, time for the fun part. First start coming up. Gotta get some coolant in here. All right, that's filled. <laughs> a, little, a little overfilled. That's okay. All right, pop the cap on there. We're gonna keep the cap off after we start it just to get the air bubbles out. All right, so this thing takes about two quarts of oil. So what you do when you wanna fill this up is we're gonna put half a quart in the actual engine right here. And then we're going to put the other one and a half quarts in the oil tank. And then we'll start it up let it run for a while. All right, we'll let that drain and then attempt the first start coming up. All right, let's get the battery hooked up. Attempt the first start here. Doesn't sound like it's spinning over fast enough here.
die. Let's see. So how are you doing? That's good. Oop. Shut off. See the pipe turning really, really red. Right there. I don't know why that was doing that. That's weird. Looks like it's running really lean. But uh, yeah, the pipe was glowing. <laughs> and the coolant's already boiling out. So it's overheating from something. Huh. That's weird. I wonder why it would do that. I think I had the gas off. When I was checking the gas to make sure it was coming, I think I had it off, so let's try this again. again it was you guys probably saw that I don't know what's going on with that huh very interesting if you guys know why we'd be doing that let me know in the comments but um, it sounds good runs good all right looked at some forums a lot of people say that it's pretty common for the YFC 450s to turn red uh, like about six inches on the pipe right there so I don't know I feel like it's running lean what I might do is tear apart the carburetor again and uh, see what jets we've got in there it is a big bore so it probably should have a little bit bigger jets all right we got the carburetor out this carburetor super fun to take out let's see if there's any gas in here I have a feeling the carburetor is dirty Either the pilot is plugged up or the needle is stuck. There's a little gas in there I see coming out. Well, quite a bit. Alright, well there's plenty of gas in there. So that wasn't the problem. Plenty of gas. Tons of it came out. So it's definitely getting gas. So maybe one of the jets is plugged up, or maybe we've got the wrong size jets in here. Highly doubtful, but we'll see. Carburetor has a little gunk down there, you can see. Nothing crazy though. Doesn't look too bad. 
Hmm. It's a little gunked up in there. Like, let's see. We'll have to look at the stack ones too, but. Looks like a 170. That's clear. That's on that way. You can see a little bit of ethanol was run through here at one point, a little bit of green showing up. All right, let's see what the pilot is here. Looks like a 52 for the pilot. So I believe that's bigger than stock. I think it's 52, is there? Yep, 52. So. So far it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't have any gas in it, that's good. We're going to blow out this whole carburetor and then use some carburetor cleaner. Get this thing nice and clean. All right, so according to this forum, stock 05 YFZ 450 um, settings are 158 for the main. So we are running a 170 main. So we're, we're uh, running a 170, so they rejetted for this thing, which is good. And then it's 42 for the pilot, and we're running a 52. So it should be perfect. The jetting should be spot on for this thing. So um, the fuel screw needs to be about two turns out. So we'll put everything back to that setting and then try this again. All right, we got the carburetor back in. Gas is going to it, so. Let's see what happens here. Maybe a pilot jet was clogged or something, so. See if that pipe turns red. That's kind of what we're after. It's idling. <laughs> so far, it's not turning red. Good sign. It's not shutting off either like it did before. So that's good. But uh, I think that's normal. I don't know. You can see it's pretty red. 
that now. Yeah, I don't know if it's normal or not. <laughs> I know the forum just says it is, but that's getting pretty hot pretty fast. But it cools down really fast too, so I don't know. So after reading all these forums on what people use for 98 millimeter big bore, um, we're right in the range of where we need to be for the jetting. A lot of people use 48 for the pilot and then like 75 for the main. We're at 70 for the main, so maybe we're a tad lean on the main, but people said that they've used 170s and it was fine. So I'm not really sure why it glows. I think that just is because of the, probably because of the aftermarket exhaust. And a couple people also said that they took off the airbox lid and that helped. So, I don't know. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. Should I run it like it is or is there something wrong with it? Let me know. But um, I think we're gonna end it there. I think we're gonna take the first ride next video, so stay tuned for that. We've got a bunch of snow on the ground, so it should be pretty fun. We'll do some drifting, have some fun with it. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.